The Golden Valley Police Department is offering extra incentives to retain and recruit new officers. As reporter Sonia Goen shows us, staffing shortages are prompting the city to take action. The Golden Valley Police Chief says he's concerned about the current staffing situation. Chief Virgil Green is hoping some new incentives will help to turn things around. Well, I wouldn't say it's at the critical stage, it's at a concern stage. The Golden Valley Police Department is approved for 31 full-time officers in this year's budget, but according to the chief, there are currently 17 on staff. Hopefully we can get back to that 31, but everybody across the country and even here in Minnesota is dealing with trying to recruit and retain police officers. The city recently rolled out new incentives to bring more people on board. Officers from other departments who make a lateral move to Golden Valley can get up to $10,000, which is paid in increments. Become a detective, maybe that's something you can't do at the agency that you're at. Maybe you can join our SWAT unit. That's something that you may not be able to do with the department that you're at now. There's also incentives for people currently working in the department. Golden Valley had to work with several unions to get the bonus deals approved. Which we're all for it. Unfortunately, this is getting more and more common because of what's happened in the law enforcement uh, profession. We're seeing several different departments doing recruitment, referral, and retention bonuses. I think it's been critical for quite some time. Honestly, I don't know how a police department functions when you're 30, 40, 50 percent down in staff. Meanwhile, Golden Valley Police hired a private firm, Bellcom Inc to assist detectives with investigations. The department also teamed up with the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office to fill in staffing gaps. This is a good city. We don't have a lot of crime, but we do need to, to make sure that our officers are able to protect the citizens. In Golden Valley, Sonia Goins, CCX News. An arrest warrant has been issued for a Minneapolis man accused in a fatal hit and run pedestrian crash in Brooklyn Center. Monroe Edwards is charged with criminal vehicular homicide. As of Monday afternoon, police were still looking for him. According to the criminal complaint, police traced a vehicle allegedly driven by Edwards to his mother's home. Court records show he is currently on felony probation for two cases of fleeing police in a vehicle. The victim's body was found around the corner from Brooklyn Center High School on DuPont Avenue North on the night of September 19th. The county medical examiner identified the victim as 64-year-old Deodoro Dimas Salgado. Police say Dimas Salgado lived near the scene of the incident. Several apartment residents will be out of their homes for a significant amount of time after a fire Saturday night in Plymouth. When first arriving units responded to the Parker's Lake apartments, crews could see a cloud of smoke from a half a mile away. Upon arrival, the entire side of one of the buildings was on fire. There were no injuries. However, six units had substantial damage. The cause of the fire is under investigation. The Red Cross is assisting the residents who were displaced. Plans are in the works for a possible indoor gun range in Brooklyn Park. Cincinnati-based Range USA, described as America's fastest growing indoor gun range, is requesting a conditional use permit for a commercial indoor recreation facility at the corner of highways 169 and 610. The site is currently vacant. The company, which has 36 stores in nine states, says its mission is to develop responsible gun owners. The Brooklyn Park City Council reviews the plans this week. A Maple Grove memory care facility is doubling in size to meet a growing need. Beehive Homes on Weaver Lake Road is opening its second phase next week, an addition of 20 plus rooms. The facility focuses on all stages of memory care. We're keeping our community full and we understand that the, the need is continuing to get greater and greater. So we were happy to be able to um, add the additional um, room. The owners say their plan has always been to have two sections of memory care open. The first resident moves in this week. A Champlain Park High School student received a significant honor earlier this month, achieved by only three other students in the Anoka Hennepin School District. As Delane Cleveland reports, the honor is just one of several reasons why Mora Wall is the true definition of a standout student. What would that look like if there is no output 
at x equals zero. To the uninitiated, our output is approaching four. This advanced math class at Champlain Park High School may sound like a foreign language. Is that a function? But for senior Moira Wall, the line like still follows the same curve so that on both sides it still will go to four. Math class is where she feels right at home. I just think it's fascinating that there's always an answer. With reading, you know, it can be interpretive that there's always a solid answer for math, which really interests me because no matter how hard a problem is, there's always some way to solve it. Her love of math isn't relegated to the classroom. She also participates in the school's math league and robotics team. You're now going to create a graph. Her hope is to one day turn her fascination with math into a career. I really want to do mechanical engineering or maybe biomedical engineering because I've always liked the idea of helping people. Helping people is one of her passions. When she's not flexing her intellectual muscles, you can find her doing volunteer work, providing guidance to one of her teammates on Champlain Park's cross-country team where she serves as a team captain, or just working with others in the classroom. She makes my job so easy. You know, like, uh, so I, I know if I give the students a task, she's gonna not only stay on task, but also help those around her, and then I can go around and help other students out that, that need some attention. Yet teachers aren't the only people to recognize her abilities. Earlier this month, she was named a National Merit Scholarship semifinalist for scoring high on the preliminary SAT. I studied all summer for that test, and it was just nice to have solid proof that it matters. She'll find out if she wins the $2,500 scholarship sometime in the spring. For now, though, she has the rest of her senior year to worry about. You know, the sky's the limit with her. At Champlain Park, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. The Maple Grove football team enters the second half of the regular season with a 4-0 record. But the Crimson were tested in their last game. Homecoming for the Crimson in the rain as they face Centennial, the team that had beaten Maple Grove three years in a row. And it looks good for the Cougars early on. Henry Perner throws a perfect ball to Josh Lee. Lee fights his way into the end zone for a touchdown. It's 7-0. They'd add a field goal on their next drive to go up 10-0. But the Crimson rally. On a fourth and one play from their own 48-yard line, quarterback Jacob Kilzer finds a running lane, and he is gone. The senior goes 52 yards for a touchdown, and it's a 10-7 game. Next drive, Maple Grove's defense forces a centennial three and out. On the punt return, it's Dylan Vocal. He gets some good blocks and uses his speed to get down the sideline. The sophomore takes this one 68 yards for a touchdown. The Crimson are in the lead for good. They'd had a field goal to go up 17-10 at halftime. Third quarter, the Crimson adds to their lead. Jordan Alagbashu scores from three yards out, and it's 24-10 Maple Grove. The only other point Centennial scores come on special teams. Lance Nielsen with a punt block, and he returns it for a touchdown. Maple Grove holds the rest of the way, though. The Crimson improved to 4-0 on the season with a 24-17 win. Wyzetta's football team was looking to bounce back from back-to-back -back losses when the Trojans played host to Tutino Grace for homecoming. Early in the first quarter between the Eagles and Trojans and Wyzetta running back number 22, Dion Loveless, gets free. He runs hard to the end zone and scores, and it's 6 to nothing Trojans. Later in the first, Wyzetta in the red zone again. Wide receiver Ford Griffith takes a handoff in the end around and gets down the sideline and in. Nine yards for a touchdown. 12-0 Trojans after one. Second quarter, Loveless goes into the end zone standing up. It's a one-yard touchdown run. They make the extra point, and the Trojans are up 19-0 at halftime. Third quarter, Grace quarterback Nick Ruhonen under pressure. His pass is intercepted by Keandre Watkins. Watkins returns it inside the Eagles' 15-yard line. And it sets up the third of four Loveless touchdown runs. This one from five yards out. The Trojans lead 26 to nothing at this point on the way to a 45 to seven win over the Eagles. After a strong 2021 season, the Park Center football team started one and two this fall. They look to get back in the win column when they face St. Anthony. Jay Wilcox has the highlights. Park Center visits St. Anthony in week four of the prep football season. 
Josh Diggs takes the handoff and goes in for the score for the Pirates as they go up 14-0 in the first quarter. They get it done defensively too. Dave Cargwell breaks through for the sack on Huskies QB Caden Rodkowicz. Jordan Salas and the Pirates have a good night offensively. Play action here and Dominic Brown finds Caden Cook over the middle for the short touchdown. And it's 28-6 Park Center as the rain continues to fall. Still in the second and Brown rolls right and throws to LaJoseph Burgess Shannon in traffic and he comes away with it and runs it in for the score. Park Center grabs a 34-12 lead at halftime. Second half now and Brown with the play action fake and he hits the motion man. Tight end Adam Verkulin for the score. Park Center is now 2-2 two two after beating St. Anthony 48-18. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.